All right. So what we're going to do now is we are going to use our sum and difference formulas to solve for this. So let me go into here. Ah. I'm going to go into our trig sheet. So if we're using our sum and distance formulas, just remember that the sum of sine, it makes sense. It has the plus sign, but it's going to be sine of the first one, then cosine of the second one. Whatever helps you guys remember it, or like I said, just have that formula and make sure you understand which ones you're doing. Let me close some of these Edmentum tabs. All right. So when we're doing this, just to prove how we go from this sum to a product, so we're going from uh, sum to product now, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it all handwritten just to make it easier on me. So we're going to do one half. Let me do a darker color, guys. I'm sorry. One half of sine of x cosine of x or y cosine of y cosine of y because the other one then we're going to do plus sine of y cosine of x and then we're adding this so we would do plus sine of x cosine of y minus sine y cosine x. And I barely had room to fit all of that in. So basically what I'm doing is I am literally just grabbing this is going to represent this part. And that is like a really ugly yellow. And this is going to represent this part right here. Now, because we're doing this, we can see that control Z work, control Z does not work. We can see that there is a negative sine Y cosine Y. So these two cancel out. Since we have like terms here in this and this, this would become two. So when we're doing this, this will end up being uh, one half to sine x cosine y since they're like terms and from here this one half times the two cancel out so then we're left with just this part right here so that's one example of how we can use this to just kind of make things a little easier for us all right so now we are going to subtract the sum and difference formulas to derive at this. So once again, I don't know why um, Admentum keeps doing this, but there's supposed to be a subtraction sign right here. Um, I, I don't know why they're doing that. They really need to fix it. All right, so let's set this one up. So this is going to be and they even mention it right here, it's like subtract. So one half, and then we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other one. We're gonna do sine x cosine of y plus, cause it's a plus sign, plus sine, uh, uh, sine y cosine of y minus, and you're gonna to wanna to do this with a parentheses cause you're gonna distribute this later. Minus sine x cosine y minus sine y, I should have written sine y cosine x. So this turns this into a negative and turns this into a positive. So because we're doing it with the positive, that means we're going to end up having two of these. And that results in us canceling these out because of this negative being distributed. That cancels these out. So let me know if I'm going too fast because I know, like, if you guys are taking notes, like, that might affect it. Um, so when we do this, we end up getting 
one half of sine y cosine x. But for some reason, I don't know why, they like having the x in the front. So this is the exact same thing as saying one or one half, but this cancels out with that. The one half cancels out with the two. And we end up getting, I forgot to erase this. After we rewrite it, we end up getting cosine x sine of y. So that's how we do this sum in different formula. Um, they're mainly used when calculating um, amplitude and things like that. So on this one, I actually don't think this one was that bad. Hopefully you guys agree. Um, but yeah, you just, it's literally just plugging it in and distributing the negative. So using your algebra, the skills you've earned from algebra to finish this up. So just write what you think was easy, what you had difficulty with here. And let's move on to the next one. Let me wipe the board first. Cool. All right, so going on to the next one. I hate when it does that. So this just shows our established formulas. Again, you guys can write them down somewhere, or I recommend printing this out. I know people that have taken this class have found that very useful. This is the sheet that I always use when I'm uh, using pre-calc. Any trig stuff is on there. So now we're going to be talking about some product identities. So we're going to be showing how we can go from here to there. So what they're going to do here is they're just working it backwards, essentially. Um, so if we have alpha and beta, we're going to replace this alpha and beta idea, this idea here with an X and it with a Y. So if we look at it that way, if we're adding them, we end up adding these X and Y together, which gives us two alpha. So if we're saying that X is equal to the sum of these two, then X plus Y should equal two alpha. And then the difference of those two should equal two beta. But I'm a little confused here because they already have the betas here. So then another way of write, oh, I see they're rewriting it this way. Gotcha. So alpha is equal to the sum of this. And then when we rewrite those, so we have these two, we have a new alpha and a new beta just by claiming that uh, we're just going to call this sine of X and we're going to call this sine of Y and we're going to replace sine and alpha there. So that's what they did here. And they're able to replace this with variables that we know and understand. So using that, because we have a product rule that states this is true, so we have a product rule that we can replace in there. Or, hold up, what are they doing here? Are they literally just, oh, okay, they're just canceling everything out. So this one from here, you cancel it out. Then if you have the sum of these two, you can replace it as this. So the main thing here that proves that this exists is just using this substitution. So again, you guys don't have to do this. They're just showing you the process of why these sum things work. And this makes sense because it's basically the one half of these added up together. So that's why we can do this. So if you ever need to add two different angles together, you can do that by doing multiplication. So that's an easy way of solving this. Uh, it's mainly used if you don't have a calculator on you. So let's take a look at the step. So we have this formula. So now we're gonna try to prove it for the product going into this. So we have cosine. So first things first, we're going to want to substitute these in. So we're going to call one of them X minus or alpha minus beta. So we need to substitute first. So we're going to say X equals alpha plus beta. So this is going to be cosine of X. So we're going to click this one first. 
So we let that variable happen. That'll help us substitute. We can substitute this in. So now that we're at this step, we're going to have to boom, boom, boom. So substitute. Oh, so we're going to substitute the alpha and beta in. So boom, boom, boom. substitute the value for x back into the equation. Substitute the values. Yep. So we're going to do this. We don't know what our alpha and beta are. So we're going to replace it with those things that we kind of made up. The sum of the angles and the difference of the angles. Adding them, subtracting them, plug them in. So now that we have this, what we can do is we can multiply each side by 2, getting rid of this 1 half. So if we multiply both sides by 2, we get rid of, multiply both sides of the equation by 2. We have that, we have that. Why are we not multiplying the both sides of the equation by 2? Substitute the values in. We did that. Okay. Simplify algebraically. What is there to simplify? Nothing. Distribute the 1 half. We're getting this. I mean, I guess we could distribute the 1 half, but I don't see how that helps. What are we simplifying? Simplify this algebraically. That times that, that times that. Oh, I see. If you simplify these, they turn into x and y because, okay. So we're going to have negative x, so the x's cancel out. And then we're going to have a positive y, so we have 2y. But 2y divided by 2 is just y. And then for this other one, since we're adding it, we have 2x. The y's cancel out, so 2x divided by 2 is x. So that's what's happening here. So they wanted to have us simplify our arguments. I was looking at the functions. So after you simplify your arguments, you get these two. And then from there, we can multiply both sides. I honestly think you could have done it either way, except they're getting really picky on it. So they wanted you to simplify your arguments first, which I guess is fair. If your argument's really complicated, it's kind of hard to tell. And now we have the difference for cosine. So this is the difference going into a product. And notice how they're still signed. So that's how you set these up. All right. So now we're going to derive this formula. So if we're deriving this formula, the first thing we're going to do is do what they've been doing. They've been substituting uh, alpha as a sum. Let me use a darker color. I'm not comfortable with the yellows. So they're going to do x is equal to the sum of alpha plus beta, and we're going to do y is equal to the difference of alpha and beta. So if we do that, and we solve this for everything, we can, oh, I almost forgot. If we add x plus y, x plus y, if we add these two together, we end up getting, what was it, uh, 2 alpha? So if we divide this, we end up getting alpha. So alpha equals x plus y over 2. So that means beta is going to equal x minus y over 2. Because if you subtract them, you get the x minus y, but then you end up with two of the betas. So this is how we get the beta and the alpha. Hopefully this makes a little sense. Now we're going to substitute everything in here. So we end up getting this 1 half of cosine x plus cosine of y. Close the parentheses. I should be putting parentheses over my arguments, the angle that goes into the function. But I mean, I think you guys can see that that's clearly supposed to be the argument. And then this is going to be equal to my, I kind of did the half part first. 
cosine of x plus y over 2. So that's this first part. And then cosine of my beta. So cosine of my x minus y over 2. So now they want me to, what am I doing here? And then I can't simplify anything, so I'm just going to multiply both sides by 2, and I get cosine of x plus cosine of y, and this is going to equal 1 half, did this prove it? Oh, not 1 half, 2. I was like, wait, this didn't prove anything. I'm multiplying by 2. This would give us 2 cosine of x plus y over 2, cosine of x minus y over 2. So if you have smaller angles, um, you can actually use this for some indifference. So if you're doing something like cosine of 15 and then plus cosine of, I don't know, 45, this is a good way to kind of do this because if you add them, 15 plus 30 equals 45, which we can do that, um, and difference. So that's a good way to kind of do it. Just remember, there's nothing you can really do in the argument to change things around except for substitution. So this proves the theorem that we were doing up here. All right, now we're going to use this formula here. All right, so we're going to derive this. So in this one, I'm going to do the one half first because as you can see, we do want to get that difference on this side, on the left. So that's why I'm doing it on the left side. I know it's kind of writing it backwards, but it helps. So when we're doing this, what we want to do is x is equal to the sum. So y is equal to the difference of the angles, which means if we were to add these together, so if we do x plus y, this would be the same thing as saying um, 2 alpha. So if we add those, we get 2 alpha. But then we want to divide by 2, making alpha equal to that. And I'm sure you can guess how we get beta from there. All right, so going on to the actual formula, we're going to do 1 half of sine. We're going to substitute everything in. So we get x plus y over 2 plus x minus y over 2 minus sine x plus y over 2 minus x minus y over 2. All right, and this is equal to cosine x, cosine of alpha, so x plus y over 2, sine of beta, or cos, yeah, sine of beta, sine of beta x minus y over 2. You can barely see that, but all of this simplifies in here because we're going to get 2x divided by 2, which is just x, so we get 1 half of sine x minus, we're going to do all this. We're going to end up getting 2y because this negative cancels out with that negative, making it positive. So we end up getting 2y over 2, which we're just going to call y. And this is equal to cosine of x plus y over 2 times sine x plus y over 2. Multiply each by both sides. We get sine of x minus sine of y equals 2 cosine x plus y over 2 sine of x plus y all over 2. So that's how we do this difference into a product of two numbers which is what they wanted us to prove right here. All right. And then just write down if you were having trouble with anything. Um, I think once you understand that x is equal to the sum of the two angles and y is equal to the difference, 
and then you derive your alpha and beta from there. I think that helps out a lot more. All right, so this next part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do self-evaluation. So and write what those challenges are, write what you found easy about it. If you found that easy, move on to the next one. And then here's the formulas, I believe. It is in here somewhere. There it is, sum to product formulas. So we do have them right here. I think they do have it backwards, so they do have it backwards as well. So if you want to go from a product to a sum, I think they're mainly used more to go from sum to product because it's easier to multiply numbers than it is to kind of use these together. But you have them both there for the mastery test. All right. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Give me a second. So we got that. We got all of the sum to product identities. So now we're going to talk about when we're phase shifting something. So whenever we see kind of like this phase shift, this change in our period, uh, sign of that, sign of this. Now we'll look, see, play musical notes. Figure one shows two notes. So this is showing the two notes, the frequency of those notes. Y is equal to this. Y hertz. Notice that the green wave of the frequency is three halves. So what's happening here is there's like a minor change in pitch and that's kind of completely changing how this goes. So by adding two frequencies together, what's happening is we are changing how the period looks completely. Instead of having one nice period, we're going to have it change they say it's like about two thirds so two, two, two. three ha three halves notice that the green wave has a frequency of three halves the red wavelength so it's going a little bit more because the red wavelength is one but this extends out more so let's kind of learn more about this and then if we subtract them are we not subtracting on this one Now we use the sum to write down the notes. Of the, oh, okay, so they're just using the formats. Notice that it's the same thing. So they're just saying that we know these are true because if you plug them in, they were they look exactly the same. All right, so use the product identity to do this. All right, I don't know what they want us to do here. Oh, didn't we already, we already did this. Oh, I see what we're doing. So we're using this formula that they taught us to bring it down to a much simpler looking formula. So we're, we're subtracting these two formulas from each other. And then we're going to use our formula or uh, sum to product formula to make this a little nicer looking. So when we're doing this, it's always good to have your unit circle ready because that's going to help you find these angle measurements a lot faster. So it's kind of weird to do these formulas. So what they're going to do here is they're going to derive it to make it a lot easier. So if we're multiplying these two together, we can change that into the sum and difference format. So we're doing this angle, these angles, we plug them in. We can add them together. So we're going to simplify these two in here. And then from here, this is a lot easier to solve. So that's going to help us figure this out a lot faster. Once we have sine of 11, six so we go from here so sine of 11 six so this is six over six this is nine over six that's gonna be 10 11 over six so that's where they're getting this the sign of this is going to end up being sine is negative one half so we have negative one half so that's negative four 
and then sine of pi. So if we go to pi, our sine is zero. So that's why this cancels out. So that's why they get this one half plus zero. This becomes a negative one half and that becomes zero. So that's one way of figuring this out a little easier is just by breaking it down into these formulas. All right, so let's go into this one. So the subtraction formula. So if we want to subtract these identities, so write the difference of these two angles. So we have these two angles. So in order to subtract these, what we're going to do is we're going to find the sine minus that. Let's just write the difference of these two. Oh, I didn't see the sine at first. I only saw this. I was like, wait. So. We plug in our formula. We're going to do the difference formula to product. So difference to product. Plug that in. This will help us solve it a little bit better. Cosine at two, uh, fourth theta. So we're going to have to multiply whatever the angle is. But this becomes a lot easier to handle than all these. So we're actually giving you quite a bit of examples here. And then here we are with this one, 75 degrees. We can plug this into adding them and dividing. So this kind of makes it a little neat because if you add them and then divide, you end up getting 45, which makes this really easy to solve. This, I think I kind of made an example about this, but these are a lot better. They're describing how we can use these to solve it. Hopefully, and I know they're going to do it on the test, you're going to be dealing with angles 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90, or some versions of these, because those are the only ones you can really pull from the unit circle. So again, if you guys haven't printed out that trick sheet, please do so. It's going to help you out a lot because it has a unit circle on it. All right, so let's get down to solving this expression. So this is a product and we're going to probably want to do it into a sum so we can go to this so we're going to look at our products and see if we can get it into a sum so at first it's kind of weird because we're looking at this so you might actually want to look at the sum two product ones so we see this we see that we have 6x plus x so in other words buh, buh, buh. And this is double. So what we want to look at here is we're thinking of this as alpha. Blah, blah, blah. So 6x equals alpha plus beta over 2. So we can use this to actually find our alpha a lot easier. We multiply both sides by 2. We get 2x. And this is going to give us... 2x, so we, this is equal to alpha plus beta. So our alpha plus beta is 2x, or 12x. And then our difference, our alpha minus beta equals x. Multiply that out. Our alpha minus beta is equal to 2x. So that should help us on the which it is not. Hold on. 2x, 12x. None of these have 2x or 12x. Oh, because we're going to have to find the other one out. Oof. Give me a second. Beta. Oh my gosh. Let's start over. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so we have these two. We want to find the original alpha and the original beta. Okay, so alpha plus beta is equal to that. So we're looking for two angles. Well, we know it's a sum. Oh, actually, we don't know that because I'm looking, I'm totally looking at the wrong one. Sine, cosine, and sine, cosine, and sine. Cosine and sine. So we know it's a difference of two sines. 
So right here, we're going to look for a difference of two signs, which this has to be the only one. Take advantage of the fact that it's multiple choice. And if we were to solve this, actually, the easiest way to solve it is honestly to probably start here and go this way. I think I totally did a backwards way of thinking about this. But use it either way. Whichever way works best for you, this one prob probably would have been easier to go this way to that way because then I could have just done 7 plus Seven plus five, which gives me, what would that be, 13? Seven plus five, 12, divided by two is six X. Seven take away, yeah, that totally would have been a lot easier. All right, so I'm not gonna make the same mistake with this one. So what I'm gonna do here for this sum of cosines, I'm gonna use my sum of cosines formula. So I'm gonna add the two angles and divide by two, and the other one subtract the two angles and divide by two. So adding the two angles, gives me 13, which is essentially 13 halves. And then if I subtract them, I'm gonna get three halves. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna get that one. All right, so now I want to think of this sign. So I like go like from the amount that I've used these formulas, I like going from sum to product. It just feels natural to me, especially if you're not, you don't have those one halves. So what we're going to do here, we're going to add these together. So if we're adding them together, we're going to add them. We get 6x plus 2x, we get 8x. Let me write that down. I'm sorry, guys. I'm totally doing this in my head. So 6x plus 2x over 2, which gives us 8x over 2, which is 4. X. So we're looking for, we're adding something or we're multiplying something with 4x. And if we do the difference of these two, so we do 6x minus 2x over 2, we get 4x divided by 2, we get 2x. So that's where we get this sine cosine. So adding these two together should give us a sine cosine. So adding sines gives us a sine cosine. There we go. So this one goes right here. Now we have a difference here. So if we're going to do a difference, let me erase all this. So if we're going to do a difference, again, we're going to add them together for the first one. So we're going to do 4x um, plus 3x over 2. That gives us 7x over 2. And if we subtract them, we end up getting this 4x minus 3x over 2. Two, that's going to give us the x over 2. And if we look up what this means, it should be the difference of cosines, which is sine sine. So we're looking for the sine sine and the 2 and 7x, 2x. So let's go here. And by process of elimination, we can do it this way, but again, if we add these two together, we get 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So we get those. So that's how we can use sum and difference formulas. Again, I prefer doing, for those at least, those ones were really easy to do the sum and the difference. Um, instead, so what I'm going to do, so let's see when we can use the product to sum. Products to sum are probably going to be literally that, when we have the product to the sum. All right. This was just a matter of choosing which way we wanted to go. So products, I don't recommend it for this because you're going to have that division sign in the middle. All right. So let's do this one. Find the exact value of this. All right. So if we want to find the exact value, we want to do it where by adding or subtracting, this will help us out. So what we're going to do here, they want us to use the unit circle, basically. So we're going to do 135 plus 15 over 2. 
And then we also have to do 135 minus 15 over 2. So this will just help us out when we get to that point where we have to do the x plus y over 2, y plus y over 2. Uh, so we add these two together. Uh, we end up getting, what is that, 160, 40, 50. So this is 40, and then 150. So I get 150. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm my brain is mush right now. <laughs> 135 plus 15 over 2, 75. Okay, so it was 150. All right, so we get 75 for one of them. And the next one, we're going to do this. We get 120 over 2, so we end up getting 60. All right, use the keyboard to answer the question when you're done. All right, so we get that 60. So now what we want to do is this was a product of cosine and sine. Product of cosine and sine. So we get this one. So we get one half of sine 75. One half. Oh, wait, this just says they're product formula. I'm sorry. I was on autopilot there. Product formulas, all you have to do is add the angles. That one half comes afterwards. I was wondering, I'm like, you can't do sine of 75. So we're literally just going to add or subtract the angles. All right. So if we're doing cosine and sine, look up the formula before you do this. Don't assume you know it. Don't make my mistakes. So we're going to add the formulas. All right. That makes so much more sense. So we're going to do 2 of 1 half, not 2. 1 half of sine then cosine, or sine then sine, sine then sine and subtraction. Sine then sine. So the subtraction sign. So the first one is going to be the product. So that's where we get this 150, which is on the unit circle. And the next one is going to be the difference, which is 120, which again is on the unit circle. So now we're going to use the unit circle to solve for this. So going here, we are going to move to 150. which is the sine value is one half. Ah, keep, let me close some of these off, guys. I'm sorry. That should already be saved to YouTube. Let's save to YouTube. There we go. That should hopefully stop that. All right. So what we're going to do here is sine of 150. So we look at the y value of 150. We said that was one half. We're going to subtract the sine of 120. Sine of 120, we look at the y value, we get uh, pi radical 3 over 2. So what we end up getting here is 1 half times 1 half times 1 minus radical 3 over 2, which means our answer, our final answer is 1 minus square root of 3 over 4. We'll highlight all of this, do your little fraction sign, put a 4 at the bottom, and you're going to click Done. So that's how you do this. And this was one of the first times that Admentum did not argue with how I formatted my answer. So you know it's right. All right, so moving on to 21, find the exact value of this. So we're finding a difference of two signs. So we're going to go here, go back up to our sum and difference formulas. Interesting, I don't know why we're going to the difference. 
Um, all right, so we're going to do this one. So this one we do have to add and divide by 2, and then we do have to subtract and divide by 2. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add these two together. So two, 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 and it's, what was it, sine and sine? Difference is cosine and then sine. Cosine and then sine. And it's a product because we're going from a sum to a product. That's the whole point of these formulas with a two in the front. So there's going to be a two in front of this cosine. So we're going to add those. I get 120. And then we're going to multiply that by, we subtract those, I get 90. So sine of 90 is 1 because it's the y value at 90 degrees. Uh, cosine at 120, 120 is 30 degrees this way. So our sine is a little, sh or a cosine, oops, sorry. Our cosine is the short one here on the unit circle. So that's 1 half. We multiply these together, we get one half. So our answer is just one because we have to multiply that by two. So yeah, this is just gonna end up being one. Uh, you can verify with the unit circle if you want, but usually when it comes to the upper part of the unit circle, I'm pretty good at it. So sine is the y value, cosine is the x value, negative one half. I gotta put my negative. So this is negative one. So our exact answer is negative one. Oh, come on. What did I do wrong this time? You use this formula. We did use that formula, didn't we? I forgot to divide by two. All right. So that was totally on me. Wait, no. I think I mixed these two up when I was doing the formula. So don't forget to divide by two. That completely changes everything. So this is cosine of 60 degrees. This is sine of 45 degrees. So if you do 60 degrees, that's one half for cosine because 60 degrees is a very short one and 45 degrees is even. So that's where it's the square root of two over the square root of two for both the cosine and sine. Multiply that, that cancels out the four at the bottom. So that's where we get that. All right, how are we doing on time? So don't forget you're divided by two. So if you're doing a difference or a sum, you have to do the divide by two. If you're doing the product, there is no dividing by two. It's just the sum and difference, which makes sense. All right, so let me clear the board. Should have just done that. And all right, so this is a sum. So we wanna add these two together. So if we're doing a sum and distance formula, that means we do have to divide by two. I'm gonna divide by two. All right, so we're gonna add these two together. So we get six pi over 12. And then if we do the difference, we get four pi over 12. These reduce into pi over two, and then this reduces to uh, pi over three, but we have to divide by one half. So whenever you have a fraction divided by a number, what's interesting is you can think of this as over one. So when you flip it over, you can just think of this as if you have a number or if, if you have a fraction divided by a number, you can just think of this as pi and you're going to multiply these two bottom ones together and get four. The reason why that works is just thinking of this as two over one, when you flip it over, they cancel out. They uh, multiply, not cancel out, sorry. So you get pi over four for the first angle. So flow for the, and then you're gonna get pi over six for the second angle. So these are gonna be the angles that we're working with. 
And that's because when you're doing the sum formula, even when I get rid of all those tabs, I'm clicking on the wrong one that way. So this is going to be a sum of signs. So finding a sum of signs. So this is going to be our alpha and beta is going to be that uh, pi over 4. And this is going to be our difference over 2. So that's that part. So from here, we're going to use, we're adding, right? We're adding. So it's going to be sine, then cosine. And then we're going to multiply the result by 2. So 2 sine of pi over 4 times cosine of pi over 6. So pi over 4 on the unit circle is the even one. So they're both the same. So that's going to be 2 times square root of 2 over 2. And pi over 6, pi over 6 is the one-sixth of the unit circle. So it's a very long, very short triangle on the unit circle. So since it's very long and cosine is the x value, it's this long one. So it's going to be square root of 3 over 2. So if we multiply everything out, we get the square root of 6 over 4. Because if they're inside the radicals, you can multiply them together. Multiply this out. So we end up getting the square root of 6 over 2 after the 2 uh, reduces that 4. So let's see. Square root of 6 over 2. Let's see if I did it. Miss a step on this one. Square root of 6. Divide this out. Uh, do, do, do. And then I said 2 because the 4 and the 2 cancel out. All right, cool. And then we're using that. I hate how they don't show you the steps by steps of it, especially since Edmentum doesn't care about the work. All right. Uh, let's do this one. So now we're going to do a product. So we're going to do product to sum. So we're going to go over here. So if we're doing this formula... We're going to just want to do the sum and additions of it. So we're not really going to change much. We're just going to, we're not going to divide by two, in other words. All right. So if we want to add these two angles together, that's the first thing I recommend is just add them together. You can't really add them because of that. So you're going to want to multiply this four by three, which means you have to multiply the three by three also. So you end up getting nine pi over, I'm doing the right one, right? Using the product, yeah. Find the exact value of this sine sine. If you add these two together, nine plus, oh, I see, because then I still have to reduce it. Sorry, I was like, I can't do 14 over 12, but it'll reduce. So here you'll get 14 over 12, which ends up reducing to 7 over 6 pi. So that's what you get for the sum. Now let's find the difference of these two angles. So if you find the difference, oh, I should have kept it that way. Uh, so if we find the difference of these two angles, we're doing 9 pi over 12 minus the 5 pi over 12. So we get 4 pi over 12, which reduces into divide both by 4 pi over 3. So those are two angles we're using. So we're using pi over 3 uh, or 7 pi over 6 and pi over 3. And I'm sorry, I know this has to be boring. We're almost done. I might have to do what I did last time and just put the last couple problems on the next video. It's going to be super short. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so we have those. We're doing product of sines. So product of sines is one half cosine then minus sine. Cosine then minus sine. 
cosine, then minus a sine. And this is the one half. So whenever you're doing a product, there should be a one half in there. And then it's cosine of seven pi over six and minus that. So seven pi over six, think of it as one six more than pi. Pi is 180. So we're doing here. So it's going to be a long negative angle, but we don't really care about the negative because cosine is our x value. So it's going to be a long, a long value. So the long value when it comes to the unit circle is square root of three pi or square root of three over two. And then when we do this pi over three, I don't know why I wrote pi over two guys, I'm sorry over three, this is a third, so it's going to be a very tall angle, so it's minus, where, is it really just going to cancel out here? There's no way. Yeah, a third should cancel it, wow, so all of this just to say zero? Because it doesn't matter, half of zero is still zero. Okay, what did I do wrong now? You don't have to do one half. Let me double check my angles. Negative. It's a negative. Not a positive. So we have two negatives. Wait, no, that's not right. Oh, it is because it's on the left side. So we do care about that negative. Watch your simple math. So we end up getting negative two, so negative two cancels out. So we end up getting negative one half. So what's happening here is we get this negative two square root of three over two, these cancel out. But then because you're multiplying it by the one half, you end up getting negative square root of three, and all of this is over two. I'm sorry guys, I know, like I'm going over time. All right, now I don't know what they did wrong. The one, where'd you get a one from? Oh my gosh, I didn't add right. Because I didn't add right, and it became pi over 3. How is it pi over 3? Oh, this was the long one. Wait, no, I did that, pi over three. Pi over I mixed them up, I wrote them backwards. It's difference, then sum. All right, so sorry about that, guys. Here's the work if you wanna check it out. Um, next Monday, I guess we'll wrap this up. But I'll probably start next Monday on this one, doing it correctly. I think what happens is I rush and that's when I make the most mistakes. So we'll start off on slide 23 on Monday. You guys have a good day. Let me pause this.